Hi, my name is Rose Castillo with Crafty Night Owls. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and today I'm going to show you another project using the Cookie Cutter Halloween stamp set. This stamp set is super cute, and it has a coordinating punch that you can purchase to go along with it, and it'll punch out these little guys. There's also another stamp set called Cookie Cutter Christmas that you can buy in a bundle with this punch and save 10%. So I haven't quite got to very many Christmas projects yet, but if you would like that set, then I would get the bundle and then add this on as an additional stamp set. And these will be available September 1st in our new holiday catalog. And we're just days away from that going live, and I am super excited. I'm not sure when I'm posting this video, so maybe it is already live, or maybe you're watching this video afterwards, but after September 1st. So... These, these stamp sets and the punch and everything in that catalog will be available then. So if you have any questions about ordering any of those products, make sure to let me know. You can also visit my website at www.rosecastillo.stampinup.net. This card is a card that I've been working on. Um, I started by um, punching out and coloring a couple of um, scarecrows. And I was using the no line stamping technique and so I started to um, work on some of these just to see what I would like and then I thought okay I need to put this guy on a card and so this is what I came up with and I wanted to show it to you I will probably speed through part of the um, coloring of the little guy because that just takes a little bit of time and I don't want to bore you to death and so I'm going to get a piece of watercolor paper first off and I'm going to be using a lot of ink colors. Delightful Dijon, Old Olive, Cajun Craze, Pumpkin Pie, Crumb Cake, and Dapper Denim. So all of those colors are going to be used on my little scarecrow. And I am going to be using our, um, these are called, oh man, now I'm drawing a blank. This, man, what is it called? Ah. Uh, Okay, this is called a aqua painter, and you fill this end with regular water, and then you can squeeze it and put water on your brush, and you're able to pick up color. And it comes with two different size brushes, so it's up to you which one you want to use. And then, if you take your ink pads and you squeeze them together like that, it'll put you a puddle of ink right there in the um, middle. And so you can use that as a palette to pick up color. Now for this color, I'm not actually doing that. I'm going to just stamp my image. And typically I would stamp these uh, an image that I was going to color in in something that wasn't going to bleed. And I would use maybe like the archival ink or a Stazon, something like that. But today, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm actually, I'm adding one more color in. This is Sahara Sand, and I'm just going to pick up this color here, and that's just because I want to give my, oh, I think there was color on my brush. I did that last time I used my brushes. Let me pick up this color and wipe it off. I'm just wiping it right on my stamp and scrub. Put some more ink right there in the middle, and this one's an old style pad but it still works great. And I'm just gonna pick up some of this color and I'm going to color in his face because his face isn't gonna be real dark, but I just wanted it not to be just white. So you will get some bleeding from your stamping, but that's okay. It will work into your image. So don't worry about that. And I could have gone with an even lighter color for my stamping, which I did on this one. And you don't see the lines as much as you do with the crumb cake, but I kind of like the outline a little bit and it's not as harsh as using like a black ink pad. So that's why I really like this. And when we're using watercolor paper, it blends together. Okay, so the next color I'm using is my Dapper Denim. And you'll see I have a puddle there of ink and I'm just gonna pick some of this up 
and when I need more water on my tip of my brush I can just kind of squeeze it with my hand and then I can color in so I'm just going to speed through this process and you guys can see how I colored in my little scarecrow and this can be relaxing if you do it if you like to color um, if not then just do it as quickly as you would like or take as much time as you'd like Okay, I went back over a couple of the other colors just to do a little bit more shading and then also right here like my old olive, I had too much water so it kind of bled so I wanted to kind of go over a couple of those areas again. And then the next thing that I did is I actually took a Stampin' Right marker and I kind of went around the beanie a little bit just to give it a little more definition and highlight um, like the bill or the flap of this and so I just went back through and put some marker on there and then I also just colored in my buttons with the dapper denim and then the next thing I did I took a crumb cake um, marker and I just went over like his mouth and um, his eyebrows and then I'll go over this um, bow that's here and I felt like because that would probably be like twine or something that would be used so I did that and then if you want to um, highlight some of the stitching I would also do that right now with your little marker around the patches and just adds a little bit of extra bump to it and then um, I did color in his eyes I did just go over it with this um, smoky slate and it's not super dark but it adds it makes it look darker and then I think that was all I did on here um, I you can go over like these little pieces here that are sticking out the straw that's sticking out of his shirt you can also do that with um, your stamp and write marker and just kind of go over to define some of those lines and then that's it it didn't take me a really long time to color him, and, but it does take a little bit of time. And then you can just line it up in your punch and punch. Whew. There's a lot of little extra pieces that you can use elements like a bow tie and or a bow if you wanted to make it a girl. Or um, there's like little eyeballs and stuff like that, a heart. And you can use that with this or the other images. And so that is done and then I'm going to take my card base which is uh, Delightful De Jean and uh, this is an eight and a half by eleven cut in half so this is four by five and a quarter no this is four and a quarter by eleven sorry got mixed up there for a minute so that's my card base I'm taking a piece of dapper denim and this one is cut at uh, three and five eighths by four and seven eighths and that's going to be a layer and then this is my very vanilla piece which is cut at four and a quarter by three and a half and this piece here we are going to use a sponge dauber and my delightful Dijon um, ink and I forgot to get my dauber out so let me get this out and that aside and you don't want a lot of ink on your dauber. 
and this is something that you're going to be using a very light hand with. And so um, I'm going to take this scratch piece here and just kind of tap off. And then you're going to kind of just swirl around lightly, light, light, light touch. And as you work your dauber in a circle motion, you can, um, you'll start to see the ink come off. And you don't want to get a ton of lines, so that's why I don't want to use a heavy hand. I'm just barely touching this to, um, my paper and just rubbing softly. You don't want a lot of ink on there otherwise you'll get really strong color and that's not really what you want or not the look that I was going for anyway. And then um, as my ink starts to kind of wear out on here then I can use a little bit more pressure to get the color um, spread out. And if I do get some areas like right there where I feel like it's a little strong then when I don't hardly have any ink on my dauber I can just go back through and kind of hopefully spread some of it out so it's not so um, strong and I'm not going all the way to the edges but um, I'm just kind of just doing it right in the middle but across and pretty much the whole thing but just like a soft edge around where there's no ink. So there we go. That's pretty good. Put my dauber aside and put the ink aside. The next thing that I did, and I'm going to move my card and my card base and everything out of the way for this portion, is I took my Cajun Craze marker and if you pull it out and you kind of flick it against your lid, you'll get those little splatters. And you can do as much or as little as you want, but it just gives you that soft little splatter in the background. And so we'll set that aside to dry for a couple of minutes, and then we will get our other pieces. I used my um, circle framelits to um, take a piece of very vanilla and then a piece of craft cardstock, and just so I can layer up my um, on top are behind my scarecrow and so let's put these on top of each other just right in the center and that's done and then I actually am going to I'm not going to use fast fuse because it's really strong and I don't want it to stick to my paper but I took some snail and put it on the back like that and then I took a piece of my um this is some um, ribbon, the twine, or man, I can't think, burlap ribbon that is in the annual catalog. And I am just going to cut off the end here. And then I'm going to pull some of these layers out just like that. And I'm going to use these to um, create some loops and just go like this and then stick it to that snail adhesive and I did like two strands on each side and my puppy's getting upset because he can't get in my door <laughs> and let's go some more on this side and one more at least. And I didn't like try to make them perfect. I just let them kind of fall like they, however they did. Oh, that needs to be stuck to something though. Okay, so there is that. And then after I was done with that, it does have sticky on it, but because of all the um, little pieces there, you want, I feel like it's best to just go ahead and use a um, Stampin' Dimensional to put this on your card because it's very bumpy from all that um, from those threads and then I don't want that yet I'm going to put my scarecrow and I also put him on some dimensionals and let's see 
go like that right in the middle. So that element is ready to put on my card. And now I'm going to start layering. Oh, I forgot to stamp my little greeting. Now this stamp set doesn't have any greetings. And so I wanted something that was fallish. So I pulled out my acorny thank you. And I'm just using this grateful for you out of that stamp set. And I have that. Nope, that's not it. Um, here it is. And this is a photopolymer stamp. So you can see where I'm stamping. And then um, you'll see on my card that I thought, well, I maybe I should add um, add in some, hopefully I'm stamping straight. I didn't want to stick my head in there and I might have done it anyway. Huh. It's a little crooked, but okay. Let's, um, that's done. I'm going to add this to here and I'll just use some Tombow adhesive. But I thought maybe it needed a little something so I added a little scarecrow or not a scarecrow a little crow down at the bottom but if you do that you can either stamp it flat on your image or on your piece of paper not on your image or you can um, fussy cut it like I did and pop it up it's up to you I think uh, this time I'm going to actually just stamp it on there and see what if, see if I like it I did do that in some basic black archival ink and so ink that up good and um, stamp that down don't rock it so I don't get no extra shadows there and that came out good and then I did take a my smoky slate and I colored in his beak because crows I think they have black beaks but I didn't want it black so I used a smoky slate and it came out really good okay all that's left for me to do is to put this on my card base and apply my centerpiece my focal piece centerpiece I don't know whatever okay and put that right in the center and this image is flat or this piece is flat I figured since this is popped up and the scarecrow is popped up that I had quite a bit of dimension so I didn't want to pop that up so I think that's good and put that right there in the center and there we go there's the card it's all finished and it is so cute and I can't wait to be able to use this to give to somebody this uh, fall and um, if you would like to purchase any of the items that we used here today you can uh, shop on my online store beginning September 1st for the holiday products and if you would need if you need a holiday catalog make sure to leave me a comment I'd be happy to send one to you if you don't have a demonstrator already and uh, you can shop on my online store beginning September 1st at www.rosecastillo.stampinup.net make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can see future videos by me thank you and you have a great day bye bye